Welcome to the online ministry of Faith Christian Fellowship. FCF is a dynamic word and spirit empowered church where faith and family meet. If you would like more information about our church or other media resources, please visit us at faithchristianfellowship.com. We hope you enjoy this message. It is the toughest job. <laughs> it is one of the toughest j- days, but you know, this is the one day that mothers are recognized, but is it really? I was I was thinking about that. You know, we all I was one of the late ones rushing to Hallmark yesterday, and you actually had to wait in line. You just walked down the aisle with all the other men. There were no women, they were all men. I was the only female, and I thought this is great. But you had to wait in line to get your cards, but you know, you go and you pick out the perfect card. But even though we may not receive the accolades on a daily basis, we truly are appreciated, and we know that. And we know that by hearing our names called countless times a day. We talked about that last night. How many times a day do we hear mommy? Um, but we're also looked to for guidance and counseling. And that's a scary thing. That's a huge responsibility to know that I have two precious little souls that have been given to me that look to me for everything. And you're always like, Am I going to give them the right words? Um, It's kind of scary, but it's also rewarding at the same time. And I'm not here to tell you that motherhood is all roses and rainbows (laughs) because we all know it's not. It's hard. It's very, very hard, but also at the same time, it's very rewarding. Um, As I was getting ready for this, I bounced back and forth to countless things, but I kept coming back to how motherhood is ministry. And... It truly is because we're called into motherhood. God knew a long time ago that we were going to be mommies. He knew exactly what babies he was going to give you. And it's crazy to think because, you know, you'll tell your mom, you're the best mom in the world. She is because she is the best mom in the world for you. No other mommy could have done what you have done for your child. And Nora got up this morning. I could hear her in the kitchen. I kept hearing silverware hit the sink. And I was like, oh, no, what's my kitchen going to look like? But I got up, and the sweet little thing prepared me breakfast. And she came in. She led me into the kitchen. She said, Mommy, close your eyes. And she made me a heart-shaped peanut butter and honey sandwich and a bowl of Fruit Loops. And bless her heart, the Fruit Loops had probably been sitting in the milk since 7 this morning. <laughs> she said, is it delicious? I said, it is delicious. <laughs> But I loved it. It wasn't, you know, she woke up and, you know, she's getting to the age now where she blows my mind daily. And, uh, but when she did that, I thought, you know, sometimes I look at it and say, am I doing anything right? And then just little things will let me know. I must be doing an okay job. But going back to motherhood is ministry. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, I'm reading this out of the Good News uh, translation. But it said, God in his mercy has given us this work to do, and so we do not become discouraged. I know there are many, many times God has given us this gift of motherhood that we become discouraged. There are times that we want to look at our children and just say, what are you thinking? And I'm sure there's times they want to look at us going, Mom, are you okay? (laughs) Are you going to snap real quick, or what's going on? But... What I love about this, it says, in his mercy, he has given us this work to do. So he has given us what we need to do. He has given us his mercy to be able to accomplish this. But in Galatians 6, 9, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. How many times have you wanted to lose heart during motherhood? It's hard. There's countless nights of not sleeping, or if you're blessed with babies that sleep from day one, You know, there's other times that you're going to grow weary, but it's so nice to know that we have the mercy and the grace to get the job done. But he's given us the mercy we need for the ministry of motherhood, and what a great honor and privilege to be mothers. I look around, I keep just looking at all this beautiful women in here, and I just think of all the different stories behind the faces and the grace and the mercy that God has given you to get through what you've gone through. It's our responsibility as mothers to lead and guide our children to God. Be examples for them to follow. And this is, I think, one of the toughest things that I look to is that how how will they ever know what Jesus looks like if we do not display it for them to see? And there are days that is rough. 
and we're having bad days. We all have bad days. I mean, but then there's our good days. And then on those bad days, you want to say, at the end of the day, you're like, how did I display Jesus for my children today? And that's another huge responsibility for us. But again, the grace and the mercy is there. Um, Like I was saying, just to think that God has entrusted me with two souls. And what am I doing to protect them, to lead them and guide them? It's, It's humbling to know that he has entrusted you with those. He is just giving you these gifts for a time. And giving you the tools and the ability to get these children through their life. So that one day... When you look at them and they are moving out, you know, I, have, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> but I know some of you are in that stage. I was talking to a lady the other day. Her children are grown. She has, um, and they have children of their own. But they live right beside her. And they're getting ready to move. And it's not a small move. It's, it's very far away. And she said, I'm not going to see those babies running across my yard or just busted in my house wanting a juice box. I said, But look what you've done. You have set them in a place. You have raised them. You've raised them in the ways of the Lord that they can go. And that you have done exactly what you've been called to do. But with motherhood came mercy. And how many days do you look at yourself and go, Have mercy, Lord, help me. (laughs) But no matter the stage of motherhood that you may be in right now, His grace is sufficient. Um, In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, And I know you guys know this scripture. But it says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And how many of those times you come to the, not really the breaking point, but you just want to cry and say, Lord, I can't do it anymore. He waits on you to say that. He waits on you to say that because you're not supposed to do it all on your own. You're supposed to look look to him. And you know, I've come to those places the other day, just not, or at times not too long ago, I was just, I started crying, and you know, I I broke down crying, and I'm not much of a crier, most of you guys know that, but I said, Lord, I can't do this on my own, I cannot do this, and you know, he said, you're not supposed to do this on your own, sometimes he just, I think he stands here like, Winnie, you you know, I'm here, Just, just look up, just look up, and you know, when you look up, we've talked about this before, when you look up, you're looking up here and not at your, your situations. You get a totally different perspective of what's going on. But I seen an interesting stat the other day. It was very interesting and heartbreaking at the same time. And this was on Barnett. It said only 26% of women say they are satisfied with their lives. 26%. That's a very, very low percentage. So I started thinking, why is only 26% happy with their lives? What, what about the balance of those women? The other, what, 74%? What, why are they so dissatisfied with their lives? Could it be wrong perspective? Their wrong outlook? Priorities getting out of order? That's very easily done as a mother. You know, you have so many things to juggle. But I think mothers have more stress today than before, only because it seems like life is speeding up. It seems like things just go faster and faster. We have more things demanding our time. There are more mothers demanded to work outside of the home. Um, You know, you have social media. And that when I was writing that, I was just listing things that probably get out of whack. Social media, I just stopped. And I was like, hmm, yeah, social media, mommy blogs, all these different things that we look to instead of this. And we're wondering why we're dissatisfied. But I started thinking about that, and I'm just going to get on my soapbox for social media just for a minute. Because, I mean, I can get stuck in the social media clump or whatever. But if we don't watch, we can allow the milestones become an Olympic sport. And I thought of that because you see so many people posting, you know, my kid's doing this now. And then some mommy will read it and say, well, my kid's not doing that yet. And they're the same age, or they might be a year older. Stop comparing your children with other children. Stop comparing yourself with other women because it's words on a screen I can type anything I can type oh my kids drew me pretty rainbows today and they brought straight home A's home from school when in matter of fact I could have been cleaning up puke off the floor all day had a bad day at work or whatever it's words on a screen it's you can't believe everything you see on the internet but if you look in 2 Corinthians 10 12 and it'll be on the board. In the New Living Translation, I love this 
the way it states in the New Living Tra Translation. Oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men, women, who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. When I read that, I was like, whoo, that's awesome. Because why in the world do we use that measuring stick as what we should be? That's, that's, it just, comparing ourselves or our children with others only opens the doors for feeling of failure because you don't measure up. You're using the wrong measuring stick. Right here is the only measuring stick we need to use. And right here you will always measure up because his grace is sufficient for you. How about the Pinterest perfect homes? Denisha hit this last night. I love Pinterest. I don't know how I made my menus out before Pinterest, to be honest. Sometimes my food turns out, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, and it's all good. Those are all really good ideas. You get great ideas off of them. But you can sit there and you look at these pictures. And I wonder how many of those pictures we look at are just pictures out of magazines. Who really lives in that type of home? You might come to my house and it could be clean one day, and you might come the next day and it's filthy dirty. But it's my house. That's where we live. I don't have a Pinterest perfect home. But there is no such thing as the perfect picture, per Pinterest perfect home. So quit stressing over it. I know we talked last night and we had a great advice. Be time to be, take the time to be mommy. The dishes will be done later. You know, throw them in the dishwasher. At least that hides them for a little while until it gets too full. But, you know, it's all there. And I have a hard time with that, I'll be honest, because I like my house in order. I don't like shoes at the back door. I don't like shoes at the front door. But right now, there's probably six at the back. There's probably four at the front. I give up. You know, you have to pick your battles, right? How about the perfect pictures? I came across a statement one time, and it kind of slammed me hard because the days of digital cameras have ruined us. Tammy gave Nora two disposable cameras to take to Haiti with her. And it was so funny when I gave them to Nora. She was like, what are these? I was like, those are cameras. She was like, how do I look at the pictures? <laughs> I said, you don't. She went, well, then how do we know what the pictures look like? And I was like, that's the joy of it. When you go to have them developed, you get to see what happened. Because you see so many times, and I'm guilty of this, you take a picture, oh, that wasn't a good one. Let me delete that one, take it again. What are we speaking to our kids? Every picture is not going to be perfect. Some of the best ones are where the kids aren't looking or somebody's hair is all messed up. Because when you look at them 10 years down the road, that's what's going to bring back the memories. Not that perfect little pose. But I just thought of that and I thought that is so good because delete and try again. Well, yeah, sometimes we can, but then there's sometimes you're not going to capture that moment. And here's a big one. Posting pictures constantly constantly. Everyone doesn't need to see a picture of your child doing something different every 10 minutes. Everyone doesn't need to see your selfie every morning on your way to work. Come on. Come on. And how many selfies are taken while you're driving? How safe is that? Your face might not look like that if you end up wrecking. But there's nothing wrong with sharing pictures of your family. You're proud of them. I understand that. I understand that. But my, my only concern is that we get so caught up in capturing the moment on camera that we don't even capture what's going on at the time, that we totally miss it because we're trying to capture the perfect moment or this, and you totally b bypass what your kids just did, you know. And also, I started thinking about, especially the selfies, and my exact words written down, where do we even go? When did we begin finding our approval and how many likes we receive? Or how many retweets we get, or how many comments we receive. Yeah. I've seen I've seen people post a picture, or a selfie, or whatever of themselves, or it doesn't even have to be a selfie, and they're constantly checking. Let me see how many likes I got. Oh, did you see who liked this? And it could be somebody you don't even talk to. You have friends on Facebook you probably haven't seen in 30 years, yep. if you've ever seen them. I get friend requests. I'm like, who is this person? I don't accept them. Now my husband's gracious and accepts everybody. <laughs> But I'm, I'm a little more cautious. <laughs> but that's the thing. You, you're constantly finding your approval in the likes and the retweets and the comments. 
And that's not where you're going to find your approval. And that's what it's come to. And it's sad to me, especially for mommies, because you may have your face stuck in your tablet or your iPhone and get guilty. I'm guilty because I'm like, this was all for me. I'm thinking, Lord, is these just notes for me or, you know, or is this for somebody else? When your kids are sitting right there beside, Mommy, watch me do this. Mommy, watch me do that. And how many times are you so into this? You go, what do you want? And they just want to show you a picture they drew you. You know, that breaks my heart. And I've been guilty of that. I have been guilty of that, of snapping at them because I'm too interested in what's going on in a world that doesn't even matter for them sitting right there. That's my world. My home is my world. My family is my world. That is my responsibility at this time. It doesn't matter what those people are doing. It doesn't matter what's going on outside there. But we received the one and only like when we accepted Jesus. That's the only like, and I put love, that we will ever need because that's where we find our acceptance. That's where we find our approval is through Jesus. But be careful. Don't spend too much time always looking for something more. I know on Pinterest, Anna's birthday's coming up. She's already given me her theme. She's even looking on Pinterest for birthday ideas. You know, what, when did it become, what happened to the backyard birthday parties with cake and ice cream and Kool-Aid and kids just playing and having fun? But now we got to rent the biggest the biggest venue and have, and that's all good and fine. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, I think sometimes we are always looking for something more, something bitter, bigger to outdo the next person, to outdo the next party. And when the following year comes up, you're going like, how do I outdo that one? Backyard parties are the best, I'll just tell you. Backyard parties are the best. But spend time, in the, take the time of stressing over those types of things to spend in the Word, in your quiet time, with your family, or creating those memories that you want to capture. Because a lot of times you're going to remember those more than the pictures. Because how many of you, you can be honest, have probably 1,500 pictures on your phones, and you hardly ever look at them. You don't have them developed. You just They're just on there. Sometimes you'll scroll through them and say, oh, I remember that. Or, you know, I'm just wondering how many pictures an iPhone can hold before they explode. <laughs> but I think... Um, I think all of that could be one of the major reasons that we find 74% of women dissatisfied with their lives. I really do. I think just getting caught up in the the being better, being bigger, having the all-star kids and having, you know, the greatest husband and all that. We're constantly comparing ourselves when, I want to go back to that and read it again in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. And if you look on that translation, it's how ignorant with an exclamation point. So it's probably pretty important. You know, when those exclamation points are there, you really better pay attention. But I think another reason that 74% of women say they're not satisfied with their lives is because they lose their identity. And I was, this was another thing that kind of helped, uh, I kept thinking motherhood, losing your identity. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, you don't lose your identity when you become a mother. You gain more identity. And I started thinking about that and I was like, wow, because you hear so many women say, well, I used to do this and I used to do that before I had kids. Well, I understand when we have children, things change. Our whole lives change. We don't have time for some of the things that we used to do. But I think becoming a mother only enhances those passions and those dreams that we had before. And don't ever let your passions and your dreams die. If there are things that you're not able to do right now because you have small children or, you know, especially when kids start going to college, you know, there's a lot of things you probably won't be able to do. But it's the part of losing their identity And then you also cannot find your identity in being a mom. And I think a lot of people focus so much on um, the the words I'm looking for. Their kids become their world. And I get that. Kids are my world. My family is my world. But you can, like Pastor Paul said not too long ago, you can love your kids to death. You really can. You can just like smother them. And in that, you find your identity in your children. So when your children may leave the home for college or marriage, you look at yourself and say, what am I going to do now? That's just like we've talked before in marriages. It's so important to keep your connection with your husband because when your kids do move out, you don't want to look at your husband and say, who in the world are you? 
where have you been the last 18, 20 years, whatever that time span is of your children being at home. So when your children leave and if you've wrapped yourself up in your children and you haven't made that, you know, kept the, the relationship strong with your husband, that's when you see marriages being divorced at 20, 25 years because these people look and say, I have no clue who I am anymore. Come on, that's big. But the losing their identity, and again, I don't think you lose your identity when you become a mom. It only enhances who you are. But don't try to do what everyone else is doing. Spreading yourself so thin that just one day you snap. And I put down, oh no, mama's going cray cray. Because there are times where I know I'm frustrated and my Anna catches on more than anything. She'll say, mommy, are you frustrated right now? And she'll say, I'll leave you alone if you're frustrated right now. <laughs> I'm like, she has learned quick in her six years. <laughs> but it's true. We try to do so much. We try to be work full time. We try to be the homeroom mom. We try to be the PTO mom, the coach, this and that and this and that, that we really lose reality of what we're supposed to be doing. You know, our kids aren't going to look back one of these days and look at everything we used to do. They're going to look back at the times you spent snuggling on the couch or the phone calls that you spent in the evenings when they needed help. Those are the times that the kids are going to remember. And again, this is just as much for me and hopefully it's for someone else, but I've put down here that do what you've been called to do and do it with excellence. He has given us the mercy to do so. We have been called to be mothers. He knew that was in our plan. He knew which children you were going to give you. He was going to give you, and I know there's probably days you're like, Lord, really? <laughs> really? But he's given you the mercy and the grace to raise those children up in the ways of him so that when they get older, they're going to turn around and they're going to say, thank you. Yeah. You may look at them sometimes and say, did you not listen to a word I said those whole 18 years? But they, one day they will look at you and say, thank you. Thanks, Mom. That's, yeah, and that right there will be all, all that it takes. But our identity does not, does change in motherhood, but not for the worst. You know, we go from um, infant stage to toddler to adolescent, teenage, and, you know, thank the Lord I haven't hit those, but my day's coming soon. But, you know, and then when they get married and have off, and then I've heard the greatest is when grandbabies come along, you know, um, but it's, it's, one, it's amazing to watch the stages of a mother and the grace and the mercy that follows for each stage of those. I was telling the ladies last night, I watched a video of, oh, you have no idea. And it showed a video of a mom being up late at night, you know, with a crying baby. And then it shows, the next clip shows a uh, mom of a teenager. She's up worrying all night because they're out. And she looks at the mom with the crying baby and says, oh, you have no idea. And it's just, you know, we don't. We have no idea what's in the next stage to come. But I can tell you, you have the tools. You have the resources to get through those. Yeah. But losing, um, losing your identity in motherhood, or is it that your identity is enhanced in motherhood, um, and also, I, I got on this tangent just a little bit, but I hear this a lot. I just need me time. We all need me time. However, you can get that out of control, and I have seen there's a balance. Your me time needs to be wrapped up in the Word and your quiet time with the Lord, so for the rest of the day after that, you can expend yourself. It's kind of like going to the gas station. You fill up, you drive around, you fill up again, you drive around. That should be on a daily basis. You fill up. You expend yourself through the day. You fill up again. But if you do not fill up, I've been in this place. If you do not fill up, that's when it's me, me, Martha and Mary syndrome, the Martha. Well, Lord, she's left me here to serve all alone. Me, me, I need me time. Take these kids. I need, to, I need a break. I get that. I know. You all need a break. But when you expend yourself so much, it's, that's when you start me, me, me. Just go to the gas station every day. Go to the gas station, fill up so you can have something to expend. But in, and in that, you know, you do. You say, well, I'll just get my girlfriends. We'll go out for a night out. Get it. Good. Those are fun. Those are great. But I see more people, of course, back on the social media thing, more people get, or ladies get more excited over a girl's night out than they do a date night with their husband. And I'm like, you've got this all wrong. You've got this all wrong. Especially if you're going out and hanging out with girls that don't have husbands yet or maybe divorced or however. But that's fine. Go out and have a good time. 
But in the meantime, don't forget your spouse. Go out and have a good time with him. Because I tell you what, your kids love that. My girls do. When are you guys going on the date again? Or you've heard us say this before. They'll be in the back. Because usually they go on our dates with us. But, and our dates always end at Walmart. Does anybody else's dates always end at Walmart? <laughs> kids or no kids, do you end up at Walmart? We do. But Anna, will, Anna loves it when we hold hands. She'll sit back there. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy's holding hands. But what does that speak to them? The comfort and the peace that brings your children it's, it's unreal, and I love that she, she does she snickers. Of course you do. She's, yeah, she's, it's Anna. I love my Anna, but she does. She finds that, but I love that because I can just see the joy in her face. Hey, Mommy and Daddy love each other. That brings them peace. But don't try st- stripping away those around you in order to find the real you. I think a lot of times we look for the real us in all the wrong places because really... When you strip everything away, like I was saying earlier, when your kids move out of the home or whatever and, and you find yourself not really alone, but you and your husband, what do you find? What Our goal should be, what do we want to find when our children move away? I want to be like the lady I was telling you about earlier, her children getting ready to move far away. And of course it's going to hurt. Of course. No one wants to see, I'm sure. I mean, she's moving hours and hours and hours away. It's not going to be a hop, skip, and jump like they live next door. But to know, that would be a proud mommy and daddy moment to know they're pulling out in the U-Haul. Yes, tears will be shed. But to know they're following Christ. They're raising their children up in Christ. They're going to make a life for themselves. You can pat yourself on the back and say, I've done a good job. But perfect, uh, when we do the, the stripping away of those around us and always looking for me time, me, 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 that's the perfect opportunity for the enemy to attack our self-worth. And I think that's a lot of times women battle our self-worth because we look to so many things to find ourselves in instead of finding ourselves in the one true, the one true word in God that that's who we are. He has made us to be. He has called us to be mothers. He's called us to be wives. And he's not going to call you to do something and leave you hanging. That's, right. That's why I love God. He is so faithful. Yes, he, is. he is not going to bring you to a place and just leave you there and say, hmm, it's for you to figure out. Have fun with that one. Even though sometimes you will look at your kids and say, how am I going to figure this one out? But he's going to give you what you need. Amen. And I put this down. It's only as I become empty of myself that he is able to fill me up. Because a lot of times we can. We can fill ourselves up with the wrong things. And I'm not lost in the life of motherhood. I'm being conformed all the time into the image of God. You know, I think a lot of times when I, you know, you always hear this before you have children. Oh, you'll never know what it's like to be a mother until you hold that baby in your arms. And that's so true because you just, when you hold your baby for the first time, you look at him and you get that overwhelming sense of, oh, no, what do I do now? Or where's the manual? (laughs) Where's the manual? But the love. I don't think we will ever fully understand the love of God, but I think becoming a mommy is pretty close, pretty close. And the perspective you get on things after you have children, you, th- you see things differently. I recall watching Passion of Christ before I had kids. You know, in the parts of Mary, Jesus' mother, I mean, yeah, of course I cried. But then when you, after you have children and you watch that, you can feel that, and it's just on a totally different level. But like I said, I'm being conformed all the time into the image of God. In Romans 12, 1, in the message version, it's on the board, it says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you, that's the key. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. And that's so true because embracing what God has done is the best for you. Embracing it. Embrace your babies. Embrace your children. Grown, small, even if they have children of their own, embrace them. Embrace the grandbabies. That is what God has done for you. And embracing that is the best thing you can do for him. And in doing all that, my family plays a huge role in me conforming more into the... You know, because I could... You know, we draw strength from everybody. But in our family, you draw strength from them. There could be times you're down and out, and, you know, that's when 
Nora's the best at it. She'll say, Mommy, you doing okay today? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good. How about yourself? She's like, well, you just seem like you're a little flustered. Or I'm like, okay, am I being frustrated a lot here lately? And that's when I pick up, hmm, what am I doing? Where's my focus? Because if my kids are picking up on it, I need to really pay attention. But in 1 Thessalonians 5.24, also in the message, it'll be up on the board, it says, the one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. And I love that because it's so true. God is so, so faithful. He is faithful. He is more faithful than we will ever recognize because a lot of times we're like, God, I'm so sorry. I wasn't very faithful in that. It's okay. He's right there. He's like, it's okay. He knew it. He knew what you were going to do. But he's still, st- he's still right there waiting on you. So moms, be encouraged. Your prayers have not been forgotten, nor have your dreams or your desires. I told myself I would not cry today. But it's so important because I think as moms, we're like, God, what am I doing wrong? Am I doing what I need to be doing? And he's like, you're doing it. I've given you. He, I'm dependable. I'm doing it for you. Your dreams have not been forgotten. Your prayers, those many prayers at night for your children, they have not been forgotten. God has heard your prayers. He knows your dreams and he knows your desires. And God is faithful. He is faithful to make sure that your dreams will come to pass. So you may ask, how do I do it? How do I do motherhood? Is motherhood something we do or is it something, is it who we are? And I think it's more who we are than what we do. Because if we're doing something, it's more like a job. You know, when you're doing something, it's more like a job. But motherhood is who we are. And God gives us the grace and the mercy. But there's always something for us to do on our part. So real quick, if you don't mind, turn to Psalms 37. And it never (coughs) fails. I always come back to this. This is like... My poor pages are ripped, but this is my scriptures that I stand up on. And in Psalms 37, verse 3 through 5, and I'm reading out the New King James, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And I'm going to go to verse 7. He, in verse 6, it says, He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. And I love that because there's three things in there that when I was reading this years ago that I thought... Man, I mean, it just jumped out at me. and I've got them circled and highlighted. and I've got them numbered across the thing. But this is something I always come back to. Because like in verse 1, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. We are to trust in Him. We are to lean on Him and rely on Him. Be confident in Him. So times we say, yeah, I'm trusting the Lord. I'm trusting the Lord. But in our heads, we're going, oh, no, is he really going to pull through? What's going to happen? What am I going to do? If this and this and that. You have all these plan A, plan B, plan C, when all we have to do is trust. That's all we have to do. But then in verse 2, this is the second thing that we have to do, is feed. We feed on his faithfulness. We dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Like I said, God is so faithful. He is never going to leave us. He even promises that. He promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But yet sometimes we feel so alone. It's because we're looking here instead of looking here. And then in, in number three is to rest. I know this is something some moms don't get to do much. But this is a different rest. We need to rest in the Lord. In verse 7 it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Be still. Take that time at the gas station in the morning to fill up. I'm guilty. You get busy. You're running here and there and trying to get going. And you don't take the time. What happens if you don't stop at the gas station when your light's going ding, ding? You have 40 miles. Ding, then you have 30. What's going to happen? Your car is going to run out of gas and you're going to be stuck on the side of the road. And it's the same way in our spiritual life. 
you get these warnings, you get these warnings, you feel it. Mommy, are you frustrated? There's my warning, I'm almost out of gas. You better stop and fill up real quick, real quick. But rest in the Lord. So trust, feed, and rest in the Lord. And I, I honestly think those are three things that we can stick with in this life of motherhood that we've been so graciously blessed with. It is very awesome. But mommies, I want you to know that your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something you do, but someone you raise. To always remember, let our ceiling be their floor. That's my main goal is I may be here, I want my children to be here, and then that way their children can keep going and going and going, and it just it's a process and it's a progression of where we're going.